Even today, you can remain abreast of the latest developments in the field of space flight. As is customary, we have compiled three most attractive topics from the latest events. To begin, we shall discuss the commencement of the final series of tests of the RS-25 engines at the Stennis Space Center. Secondly, we will take a look at another launch of SpaceX's Starlink satellites. Lastly, we shall regale those who take pleasure in fascinating photographs with the best images captured during the launch of Falcon Heavy with the Psyche spacecraft. When the RS-25 engine was ignited at the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi on October 17th, it wasn't just any test. The final certification testing phase of modernized RS-25 engines for the SLS launch vehicle has begun at the Fred Hayes test stand. The RS-25 developmental engine number E0525 underwent the first of 12 static fires planned for this phase during the test. NASA officials and Aerojet Rocketdyne, the engine's manufacturer, anticipate the tests to be concluded by 2024. There are 16 RS-25 rocket engines remaining from the shuttle era, sufficient for four launches of the SLS, since it uses four of them on its core stage. Consequently, the Artemis V mission will necessitate the utilization of new engines. These newly manufactured engines are not simple copies of the original RS-25s. Modern manufacturing techniques, including 3D printing, are being employed to construct them in addition to the utilization of new materials, which will reduce the number of components and thus the price per engine. Prior to the commencement of production, the engines must be rigorously tested to guarantee that they meet expectations. All new components must be exhaustively tested and certified as safe. This brings us to the current series of tests. If you are concerned about the amount of smoke generated during ignition, there is no cause for alarm. This is not smoke, but rather a cloud of water vapor. You see, the RS-25 engines burn liquid oxygen and hydrogen, which means the only product of their combustion is water. The October 17th test lasted for 550 seconds, with the rocket engine operating at up to 111% of the nominal thrust at certain points. These parameters are consistent with the conditions the engines will experience in actual operation. Launch Complex SLC-40 on Cape Canaveral has little respite these days. Only four days have passed since the last mission launched from there, the Starlink 6-22 which we reported on in our previous episode. On the 18th of October at 039 Universal Time, the Falcon 9 launch vehicle departed from the launch pad again on Starlink 6-23 mission. This time, the payload was comprised of 22 second-generation Starlink Mini satellites designed to provide global internet access from an altitude of 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface.
The low orbit placement of these satellites has its benefits and drawbacks. On the one hand, the signal transmission distance between the client and the satellite is much shorter, resulting in a reduced latency compared to geostationary orbit. Furthermore, the satellites are more easily deorbited at the end of their lifespan and require less transmission power for communication over shorter distances. On the other hand, a satellite network in low orbit necessitates a larger number of satellites, as each one only covers a limited area of the Earth. Additionally, the sunlight reflected from the satellites at lower altitudes is more visible and therefore disturbing for astronomical observations. This marks the 16th mission for this particular Falcon first stage, though it is not a record-breaking feat. Two Falcon 9 first stages have already flown 17 times. The 40-meter tall rocket stage landed on the Just Read the Instructions autonomous drone ship. The launch of each rocket is highly attractive for photographers. The more significant the launch, the more people it draws. The launch of the Falcon Heavy with the Psyche spacecraft on the 13th of October was particularly captivating, yielding a plethora of excellent images. Should you be interested in information regarding the launch or the Psyche mission, we direct you to the previous episode of Spaceflight News. Today, we shall revisit the Kennedy Space Center in Florida to present you some of the finest images from that launch. No commentary, just ambient music. Enjoy it! Thank you for your attention to today's episode of Spaceflight News. We are delighted in your interest in space news, and to ensure you do not miss future episodes, kindly consider subscribing to our channel. Additionally, you can find other interesting news on our profile on Social Network X, formerly known as Twitter. The link can be found in the video description.